Pecos and peanuts are the three largest conforms foods that we eat every day. In every meal, you're going to find these particular foods. A lot of them have been genetically modified by Monsanto, by this insidious corporation that is now controlling all of our food. Now, as far as the First Nations people and the way we see this, this is disgusting on how they have manipulated not only our lands, they are fracking our land as we speak as far as our water supply, and then that goes into directly into our food. So we're not only having these GMOs being genetically being put into our food, but we're also, when the ground is seeped through this water that is contaminated with these acids and all these things to break down the sails so that they can extract this oil, we're also ingesting that as well. Now, I'd like to bring to the attention that, you know, Senator Evans, Noreen Evans, she of course came out with this particular piece of legislation here in California, which is called SB 1381. We need everyone here, if you really want to help, as far as, you know, giving it to Monsanto, fighting back, we have to do this in every state, labeling all of our GMOs in every single state until the federal government and specifically the FDA does something about this insidious issue that is continuing with our food supply and the poisoning of our mother earth, our people. And I'd like to bring to attention some of the things that are going on as far as nationally and globally. As far as us, UNA, you know, there is basically, if you lobby at the Capitol, you know, there's actually, there's actually this uh, particular piece of legislation that is right now that we must reverse. That's House Resolution 733, which is, of course, the Monsanto Protection Act. Now, one thing I'd like to see is the UN step forward and actually do something more than just push around paper. They can take a stand against Monsanto. They are powerful enough to take on Monsanto. Us, as a community, we have to continue at the grassroots level to fight every single day. I say divest in Monsanto. Boycott all their products. That's what each and every one of you, if you really want to hit them, you have to attack them in their wallet. That is the only way that we're going to combat them and defeat them in the long run. But we must continue to organize through our communities, no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are. Please make those calls to your elected leaders at the state and nationally for these particular pieces of legislation that we need. Even here, right here at City Hall, we can go to City Hall and demand that they start labeling GMOs. Can it be done? Are the organizers here ready to make that move as far as introducing that? They just put a ban on plastic, plastic bags being sold here in, here in this city. Well, why can't they do something about GMOs? We can do these things, and we have to do these things to fight back, and to fight back peacefully, constructively. That's the way we're going to defeat Monsanto. That's the way we're going to fight back against these corporations, is continue to embrace each other, and continue to organize together. Thank you for your time. Keep it up. Oh. Thank you, Pana. He's genius. <laughs> Eric Eberman is in the house. I'm looking for the SF founder of March Against Monsanto, Eric Eberman. Eric. What happened to Eric? We lost him. Eric Eberman, we're looking for you. How about Paul Cox? Did he surface? Nadia! Nadia! Paul Cox? Uh, Is Paul Cox in the house? No. Okay. We'll have another quick speaker from Veterans for Peace who can talk a little bit about um, an issue important to all of us, the relationship between GMOs and Agent Orange. Long history here. Agent Orange! Hello, my name is Bill Creighton. I'm president of the San Francisco Veterans for Peace chapter. And uh, millions of people are still dying. Millions of people have died from the effects of uh, Agent Orange. Uh, Monsanto was one of the developers, contracted out during the war in Vietnam along with Dow and others. 
Uh, they were told, uh, we were told at the time, don't worry about it, it's just a defoliant, weeds, kills weeds. And uh, you could go on YouTube and places like that and watch people throwing drums around it and acting like it was just a weed killer. Well, it's not the case. Its effects come so many ways, it was hard for veterans and, and civilians to even make a claim that that was the cause of it. A friend of mine who grew up in uh, a neighborhood, his, uh, he had multiple sclerosis, most likely caused by Agent Orange, and two of his children uh, had birth defects. And I just returned from a trip to Vietnam where we, uh, Veterans for Peace uh, annual tour, and part of the tour is that we work with groups with Agent Orange, and we visit oranges, uh, orphanages and, uh, and hospitals. And there's a place called Friendship Village that was developed, founded. One of the initiators was a man named John Mizo, a veteran and Veteran for Peace member. Friendship Village is the uh, similar to a residential college campus uh, made from adults, made up from adults and children, all suffering from the various effects of Agent Orange. Uh, my friend Zung, who's lived there for 12 years, uh, she's uh, uh, crippled, bent, difficulty moving, speech impediments, but her intellectual facilities are uh, right on top, no damage at all. Other people will have the opposite. It manifests itself in many ways. And uh, I'll introduce Paul Cox, who was our Agent Orange Veterans for Peace. I'd just like to say my friend Zung said to me one time after us talking about the regrets of spraying all, and her reaction was, Oh, the war's over a long time ago, and you're not spraying Agent Orange anymore. We didn't take much consultation from that because people are still dying. People are third generation now. They're still being affected. So I'd like to introduce Paul Cox from Veterans for Peace. <laughs> Sorry, I just got here on my bike. I'm way late. I really apologize. It's okay, Paul. Paul. Yeah, my name is Paul Cox. I'm with Veterans for Peace. Uh, we're, we're pushing a piece of legislation now that will do a great deal to help the Vietnamese victims of Agent Orange and the children of U.S. veterans of Agent Orange. If you haven't had a chance to sign one of these orange cards, please do. The legislation was sponsored by Barbara Lee, who speaks for me. But it hasn't been signed by any other Bay Area legislators. Not Spear, not Pelosi, not Thompson. None of them have. So if you live in... The if you live in their districts, they respond to money, but they'll mostly respond, they'll respond better to their constituents. And if you live in one of those, uh, please get in touch with us through this card, and we would help you uh, talk to your legislator to get them support this legislation. It has five elements. Clean up the mess in Vietnam that Monsanto and Dow helped create. Help the Vietnamese victims in Vietnam. Help the children of U.S. veterans who get nothing, even though many, gener many children and grandchildren of Vietnam veterans are suffering from birth defects because of their father's exposure or their mother's exposure. The fourth element is to do some real research into the, into the problems of dioxin, which was a byproduct of contamination in Agent Orange, made by our friends at Dow and Monsanto. And the fifth element is, oh, help for the Vietnamese American community, which has never had, there's never been a health study of the Vietnamese American community. And it stands to reason if U.S. veterans are suffering from Agent Orange exposure, and if Vietnamese are suffering from Agent Orange exposure, there is some suffering in the Vietnamese American community also. So those, that's, the, that's the elements of this legislation. It'll, do, it'll go a long way to helping the victims of the last mess that was created by Dow and Monsanto and the U.S. government and the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Marine Corps. And it'll go a long way towards uh, really uh, healing the wounds of war and it'll go a long way towards teaching this country lessons that you have to pay the cost of war. You can't create a mess and walk away from it. Thank you. It's House Resolution 2519, 2519. Um, if you Google that, you'll find it. And um, you know, the cost of war is a big deal. And maybe we would learn that lesson someday. But right now, we have to clean up this mess. When I was a kid, I was in Boy Scouts, <coughs> which got me ready for the Marine Corps, kind of. But so did the marching band. But anyway, uh, and 
You know, when we went camping, the rule was you leave the campground at least as good as you found it. You clean up your mess. And we left a mess in Vietnam, thanks to Dow and Monsanto and the U.S. government. And we need to clean it up. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We have one more speaker. His name is Eric Eberman. He is the founder of the San Francisco March Against Monsanto. Let's give him a round of applause. Hi, everybody. Hey. So I'm not very practiced at public speaking, so bear with me if I'm a little nervous. But okay. I want to tell you guys what, what I've done over the, the last seven or eight months because it relates to our struggle with Monsanto. Um, I quit. I left this country. I'm here now for a short period of time. I bought a mountain, or a big chunk of it. I am living off the grid. I'm growing my own food, most of it. And um, it's been an amazing experience. Eliminating all the GMOs and unhealthy food, um, I lost 50 pounds in six months. So um, that's been really exciting. And the, the place that I'm doing this is in southern Mexico in the state of Chiapas. I don't know if you've all heard of Chiapas. It's a, it's a beautiful land, uh, tropical, and that's where the Zapatista Revolutionary Army is. And um, it is the heartland of corn, papaya, chilies, chocolate, and many other things. That's where it comes from. So I consider myself to be on the front lines there in dealing with the, the GMO issues. How many people here think that Mexico has banned the, the planting of GMO corn? They haven't. They haven't. There's a lot of memes that have gone around and a lot of exaggerated reporting that's gone around. One district judge issued a moratorium that was immediately appealed the following day, and that means no change. So three months ago, I was at an incredible place near the Guatemalan border. There's Mayan ruins, there's 48 lakes, there's rivers and waterfalls, and this is a, a big indigenous community, and they are growing 5,000 acres of Monsanto pioneer seeds. So, so um, I stopped the, the transportation, I got out and I took some pictures, and the thing that really struck me about it was the absolute lack of anything alive at all. No mosquitoes, no butterflies, no bees, nothing. It was dead except for the corn. And the corn is uniform. It's all the same size and it's all the same shape. So my main work now in Chiapas, aside from my personal project, is organizing. I organized a march down there. They're doing it today, right now, as we speak. And, and, and so I'm working with that group that came together to form brigades, to go out into the communities and convince these people who have been getting subsidies and other kinds of essentially bribes from Monsanto to grow GMO corn to convince them not to do it. And that's going to be my project for the next year. And I hope to come back next year and report that we've actually able, been able to convince at least one community to change their habits. So um, my the, the thing that I want to leave you with is really question a lot of the, the, the memes that are going around because they're creating false impressions about our successes in this. In the specifics of Mexico, it was corn and then a few months ago, soy. So the soy plantations are directly from Monsanto. And in one state of the seven states where they had approved GMO soy to be planted, another district judge ordered another moratorium that was immediately appealed the following day. Nothing changes. Nothing stops. They're growing the stuff. Meanwhile, the rest of the world thinks it's been banned. So I'm asking all of you to use a more critical eye with the, with the media that's surrounding our movement because some of that stuff may be infiltrated and maybe things that are designed to pull us off track. And, and so that's, that's the core message that I have for all of you today. Thank you for coming. I was really excited to see how many people showed up. The pictures are going to be awesome. We look huge on 3rd Street. And that, yeah. And, and so that, that was really exciting. And um, I have here a little notebook for volunteers to sign up. 
Um, we really want to expand our horizontal reach in the coming year. So um, we're looking for people who are bottom liners who can, if you take one little tiny piece, that you'll get it done. Those are the kind of people that we're looking for. We don't need big giant things. We need little tiny people, little tiny steps that get completed. So um, if you're interested in volunteering, please, I'll be over on the side here. Come see me. And that's it. Thanks for coming. Sullivan, Arch against Monsanto. We're not an organization. We're a movement. There we go. Yes, yes.